Hi everyone, I'm back and we're going to talk today about plant tissues and cell types, specifically ground tissue after I give a brief introduction. And then if we're lucky, we'll have a video at the end. We'll see how it goes. So I want to start with um, the idea that uh, cell types in vascular plants are sort of sorted and distinguished and described by a couple of different characteristics. Their cell wall characteristics, mostly whether it's a primary or secondary cell wall, and how thick the cell wall is. Their shape, um, for example, is it sort of a, a round or um, a spherical shaped cell? Is it long? Does it have uh, extrusions coming off of it? Is it tubular? All different kinds of shapes and whether it has active organelles like plastids and a nucleus. And then also, of course, cells are distinguished based on their function. So for each of the cell types that we're going to talk about over the next couple of days, we're going to talk about their cell walls, their shape, whether or not they have organelles, and of course, what function they have. One of the things I want to remind everyone is that cells all the different kinds of cells in plants uh, arise from the single uh, meristem cell. Meristem cells are totipotent, meaning they can turn into any other kind of cell. Uh, meristem cells are very small and generally lack a vacuole, um, unlike in this picture, but they can develop given um, chemical signals or external environmental signals, they can develop into any of these different kinds of cells. Um, so that's an important thing to keep in mind for later. Okay, so here's the good news. There's really only three kinds of uh, tissue types in vascular plants that are um, vegetative tissue types, meaning that they're not reproductive, they're just like the regular body of the plant. There's only three kinds, unlike in animals when there's many, many different kinds of tissues. Um, the three types that we have in uh, vascular plants are ground tissue, which makes up most of the body of the plant, vascular tissue, which are the um, vessels and um, tubes that uh, move water and sugars around the plant, and dermal tissue, which tends to be a thin layer of cells on the external portions of the plant. And again, the apical meristem produces cells that lead to all three of these types. So I want to show another picture of these tissue types. I really like this diagram because it shows all of the different tissue types in the shoot and in the roots and in the leaves, so um, in a longitudinal section and then also in cross section. So you could have a look at this diagram in a little bit more detail um, in your packet or on your screen. Um, here, um, this is the entire primary plant body. And what I mean by primary plant body here is that it's the part of the body that other part of the plant that is uh, actively growing or has actively grown within the last growing season. So um, for an annual plant, this is all of the parts that you see, the uh, stems, leaves, and roots of an annual plant. But for a tree, this is the sort of growing parts, the new branches and the new root tips, and just a thin layer of the trunk counts as the primary plant body in trees that live longer than one year. Um, and these tissues are color coded. Again, the yellow here is ground tissue, the vascular tissue is here in veins, and you can see it in different um, organs of the plant and then the outer portion the dermal tissue is the dark brown we're going to focus today on ground tissue because it's basically the most uh, common form of uh, tissue in uh, the primary body of plants as you can see here and so um, we're going to spend a lot of time on ground tissue in the next few minutes so ground tissue is as you could tell from the previous pictures found a all over the body of the plant. It's everything between the dermis um, and the vascular tissue. Everything else is ground tissue. So it's found in leaves, stems, and roots, and it takes up most of the body of the plant. Ground tissue has a number of super important functions in the plant. Um, ground tissue tends to be the most metabolically active part of the plant. So these are so the, some of the functions include um, the metabolic metabolism of the plant, photosynthesis, respiration, 
um, synthesis of important plant chemicals, but also starch storage, uh, oil storage, and a whole bunch of, and structural support are all functions that ground tissue plays in the stems, leaves, and roots of plants. Um, and a final function is that some ground tissue has the ability to de-differentiate and become meristematic um, and actually start growing new cells, which is a kind of cool function that the other tissues are not capable of doing. There are three subtypes of ground tissue, and they have ridiculous botany names, parenchyma, colenchyma, and sclerenchyma. Thankfully, you only need to memorize one of them. Parenchyma is the most important, and you do have to learn that terrible word. Um, parenchyma is uh, basically the bread and butter of the plant, and you just need to know what it is. So I'm going to tell you about parenchyma tissue, but first I want to at least mention the other two types of ground tissue. First, we have colenchyma from rhubarb. Um, colenchyma cells have the structure of having only primary cell walls, not secondary cell walls. Colenchyma cells are alive at maturity, and their cell walls are unevenly thickened, which means they're very flexible. So that means that some of the cell wall areas are very thin and some of them are thick. So if this is your cell um, cytoplasm and here's the cytoplasm of another cell and another cell, you can see at the corners each of these cells is thickened, which allows the um, tissue to be uh, strong and flexible. And what colenchyma tissue does, its function is to support growing tissue, specifically in young leaves and in young stems. So colenchyma is alive at maturity and has primary cell walls that are unevenly thickened. Sometimes colenchyma cells have plastids, but not always, it depends on the species. Sclerenchyma, on the other hand, tends to be a uh, tissue that's associated with mature tissues, not tissues that are still growing. Sclerenchyma tissue is uh, characterized by having secondary cell walls. So these cells are dead at maturity and have thick, solid cell walls that help support the tissues. So in this case, these are fibers, um, which are actually present in wood or um, sometimes they're present in um, uh, tissues that are, or um, plants that are used to make fibers, like linen has some good sclerenchyma fibers in it. Um, sclerenchyma is also found in um, some fruits, like in peach pits actually, are uh, full of sclerids, which have thick secondary cell walls and that protect that uh, seed from uh, predators um, quite effectively. So those two, t that's all I'm going to say about those two tissues. I'm going to spend the rest of the time talking about parenchyma tissues. So parenchyma is highly variable and it is located throughout the plant. It's in leaves, it's in stems, and it's in roots. Um, it makes up most of the uh, inner part of the plant. Um, its structure um, is highly variable as well, but there are some things in common with all parenchyma cells which make up parenchyma tissue. Um, parenchyma cells are alive at maturity, which means they have only primary cell walls. They have an active nucleus and they have um, usually active plastids as well. So parenchyma tissue is responsible for photosynthesis. It's responsible for all of the metabolism of the plant. Um, it's also responsible for starch storage and other kinds of storage. Um, so any cell that has plastids is probably a parenchyma cell. Um, so I think that's all I need to say about structure. The functions of parenchyma are highly variable as well. I mentioned several already, pho photosynthesis and starch storage. Um, they also can help transfer materials from one area of cells to another, not in a transport like a way like xylem and phloem, but just moving uh, materials synthesized in a cell out to the xylem and phloem. Um, and the last function of parenchyma tissue that I want to mention is that parenchyma is the only kind of tissue that can de-differentiate. It can give up its function and turn into a meristematic area 
if given the right circumstances. So if you cut off a branch and put it in the soil and the branch starts sprouting new roots, that's because the parenchyma tissue in the stem um, has become meristematic and that's a very important function of parenchyma tissue that allows plants to grow asexually um, and reproduce in a clonal fashion. Okay, so here are some more parenchyma cells. Just very quickly, here's a leaf. All of this tissue here that's photosynthetic is called chlorenchyma. It is, um, it is um, parenchyma tissue with chloroplasts. This tissue here, all of these cells that appear white that are around these vascular bundles, all of these cells are parenchyma. In this case, they're called pith, and they're sort of forming some structural support for the stem of a plant. And these are parenchyma cells that have uh, amyloplasts, so these are starch storage cells. I don't know what's going on with this one. I don't remember why I put that one there. I'm not sure. We'll just move on. Okay, and one last uh, uh, example of a parenchyma cell that has a really cool function is this is a parenchyma cell that's a transfer cell. It has a lot of uh, complicated cell wall structure here, and it has a very high uh, surface area of cell wall and cell membrane. And that's because along the um, edges of this uh, cell, there's a lot of transfer um, of material synthesized inside the cell to the area outside the cell and the high surface area allows that uh, the high surface area of the structure helps the function of transferring the um, the chemical um, that was synthesized in the um, cytoplasm of this cell. All right, and the last thing I want to do today is show you an excellent video of uh, basically parenchyma tissue doing its thing. This is specifically potatoes, um, and potatoes of course are full of parenchyma tissue that's all starchy and full of plastids, um, and when that parenchyma tissue is um, uh, sort of, well, I'm just going to show it to you and you can see what happens. It's awesome. It's only one minute long, so hopefully this will work. Okay, so we've got three potatoes in the soil here and they've started to sprout. And what we have is the parenchyma tissue inside here is providing all of the energy for the growth of these roots and shoots. And remember that the roots and shoots are also mostly parenchyma tissue. They have an epidermis and vascular tissue as well. So they're making new rootlets and some of the tissue has already grown into stems and started growing into the um, green uh, leaves and stems of the above ground parts of the t potato. So now this is also parenchyma tissue and it's shipping sugars back down uh, through the vascular tissue which we'll talk about tomorrow and what I really want you to focus on is that some of that is going to cause new potatoes to grow. Look, so we're storing new parenchyma tissue in the potatoes um, in the soil here and there's another one over here and I'm not sure if there are any more. Okay, that's all I want to show you um, and that's all I've got for today and I hope you have a great evening and um, well whatever day, what day, whatever day it is, whatever time of day it is. Um, next up we're going to talk about vascular and dermal tissue and we're just going to hope for the best. All right, thanks y'all. See you later.